I'm Dr. Ted of Jefferson Orthopedics and this is Fracture Friday. The idea is that I'm going to go over a topic, maybe a fracture, maybe just something that's interesting in orthopedics that I think that you might find interesting. The topic this week is an open fracture. I recently had an open fracture presented to the hospital. This patient got thrown off of a horse and sustained an open fracture to their forearm. An open fracture used to be called a compound fracture, but we don't call it a compound fracture anymore. We call it an open fracture, meaning that the bone is now open to the external environment, which increases the risk of infection and creates an interesting and different treatment dynamic. So, fractures are traditionally described in certain ways. We call it mid-shaft. This happens to be a mid-shaft two-bone forearm fracture, meaning that both of the bones in the forearm, the radius and the ulna, are fractured. This fracture happens to be a transverse fracture, meaning it's broken right in the middle and it goes straight across the bone. And I'll have opportunity maybe in later videos to describe different types of fracture patterns, but that's what this is. The fractures are also described when we talk about open fractures in, in terms of a classification. So the classification for open fractures is one, two, and three. One means that the laceration or the penetrating trauma that caused the open fracture is less than a centimeter in length. Two means it's between one centimeter and ten centimeters and three is greater than ten centimeters. So threes can also be greater than ten centimeters and if it happens on a farm where there's a lot more fertilizer and contaminants bacterially. It also is if the fracture is open for greater than eight hours before they present to the hospital before they receive any initial treatment. So this particular fracture happens to be a mid-shaft two-bone forearm fracture. It's a transverse mid-shaft two-bone forearm fracture and it's a grade one open. Okay, that's how doctors talk to each other and that's how I'm going to try to teach you to talk or listen to me because I don't know how to describe it in other terms. So, the way this fracture is treated typically for grade one fractures. We put them, the patient on high dose antibiotics to make sure that we don't have continuation of the infending organisms. And we do an open reduction internal fixation. So these x-rays that we're gonna look at now are after we treated the fracture. We put a plate on the radius and we put a plate on the ulna. And for radius fractures, we want at least six cortices above and below the fracture. And the same thing with the ulnar fracture six cortices above and below the fracture. Now that requires a little bit of a description too because a corte cortex or a cortice is one of the tubular bone where the screw goes on through one side, that's one cortice, and then when it goes through the other side, that's two. In other words, if you look at these x-rays, you will see that there are three screws above and three screws below the fracture. So this fracture has been, in what we currently know in orthopedics, adequately stabilized and should heal without incident. Also should be discussed about how long we keep patients on antibiotics. The antibiotics are traditionally treat, continued for at least 24 hours after the fracture, through the IV, through the vein, and then orally for about 10 days. Hey, Dr. Ted again. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our page. And by the way, if you'd like, please make comments at the bottom. I'll try to answer any comments that you may or may not have at the bottom as soon as I can get to it. And if you have any topics you'd like to hear about in the future, maybe you have a family member that sustained an injury, maybe you had an injury and you'd like to learn more about the general principles behind this treatment of said injury or said problem, then send me a message and I'll try to do a video about that in the future. Thanks for watching.